Doom Out Girl. Daddy okay. can be 50 soon. Quit rushing. Eat 50 is fun, Jason. Yeah, you look like you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a real ball. Tell me more. Six. This is the look of a 57 year I'm just joking. Who's younger? You are. Well, well, well. He's, he's good. I mean, look. Before, <laughs> after. That's when you first start working on the Jason Show. <laughs> and this is what happens after you work on the Jason Show for nine years. The future looks bright. <laughs> Roll the open. <laughs> Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. Let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Welcome to the Jason Show. Let us start with this. It's the ultimate letdown when all you want is an ice cream cone. He Thank you, audience. Hearing that the soft serve machine is broken again at your favorite fast food restaurant. Well, the government wants to help. They want to do something about it. This is not a joke. Right now, only technicians licensed by the company that makes McDonald's soft serve machines are allowed to make repairs. Well, the Federal Trade Commission, this is not a joke, wants to allow third party vendors to make repairs, increasing competition and reducing the time machines are broken. Busted machines can cost hundreds of dollars in lost sales each day to McDonald's. I say yay for government interference on this one. <laughs> That's right. Finally, something we can all agree on. There we go. Cue the music, Leo. Here we go. It. They didn't care. Let's try this again. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kendall Mark, Hi. everybody. There we go. There we go. Hi, y'all. There we go. I feel better. Sorry. There we go. How you doing? Better. I feel better now. Yes. I mean, at first, I was like, I know. I'm sorry. It's Monday. I'm After happy you got to the, see the you. positive reinforcement from the audience, <laughs> yes, the affirmation, yeah. I feel better now. There is somebody, again, you know, I get my little audience briefing from mm -hmm. Aaron Schwaberini back there, and I did hear that there's somebody that doesn't want to be on TV today. And yeah. <laughs> No. She wants to be on the least amount of time. Okay. Now, Erin won't tell me where she is, but she's right there. Yeah, right there she is. Yeah. Nobody you, puts you will, in the corner. What's your name? Becky. Becky? <laughs> Becky, you'll never be on again, I promise. <laughs> Leo, take five. Take seven again. There we go. There's Becky. Yeah, there we go. There she is again. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Never say you don't want to be never, on TV. Never tell Aaron you don't want to be on TV. Never you know. ever do it. No, no. Did you have a good weekend? Uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. My kiddo was sick, so that's it, why you weren't here yeah, on Friday. Yeah, yeah. On Friday, but um, no, nothing serious. Just the first time your baby's sick, you're like, yes. oh my god, somebody help me! And they're like, everything's fine. Chill out. Every new mom can relate to you. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. I was in a panic. My mom's like, it's okay, honey. Did yeah. you need me to come? 
come over. I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> please, help, mom, please. come on over. Please, but yeah, yeah it was fine. well, you look great. You would Thanks. never have known. Thanks. Yeah. Did you have St. Patty's Day fun? I didn't. We stayed at home. Mm -hmm. I. It's like New Year's Eve. I think it's like amateur hour, and I try to avoid. You know what I mean? It's like I, I think don't... he was just making fun of like half of us. Well, no, I, I um. I'm making fun of me too. I okay. just I, I know I want to stay home, so we stayed home. I, we watched a ton of TV. I'll review some of it coming up, but no, I I just was so excited to get to the show today because, and I'll explain this again in a little bit. But don't turn the dial. Don't. I know there's a lot of stuff to watch. Right. You're not going to want to miss this because. Um, that right there, Leo, can we take a close-up uh, of this? This is a 43-year-old uh, can of beer. Oh. Now, this is, here it is. There, this is a 43-year-old can of beer, uh, and it was a promotional thing from my beloved show, Dallas. And I have been given many of these cans over the years by very sweet people. I have quite the collection of them. My mother's neighbor just gave me another one, and I thought, Jace... What can I do with these? Because I have like three dozen of these things. And I thought, Three oh. dozen? Oh, I do. I have like oh three dozen. <laughs> and I thought, um, it's from 1980. And I go, oh, Jace, what can we do with this? Yeah. Oh, we'll have photographer Eric drink it. Oh. So that's right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hi. Photographer Eric is literally our very own life cereal Mikey. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, he'll drink it. So we asked Eric, because I don't want to force anyone to do anything, even for the sake of good television. I said, Eric, and Jeff and I went to Eric. We said, um, first of all, sign this. We yeah. said, first of all, sign this document. Um, and then second, uh -huh. would you drink this beer? Our executive producer would like to make clear he had nothing to do with this. <laughs> for legal That's not reasons. what the document says. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> but um, fine. Then Bjorn uh, had him do it. And then, yeah, let's throw Bjorn under the uh, under the. Uh, bus. So Eric, a little bit later, is going to drink 43-year-old beer out of this here. That's right. You're not going to want to miss it. That's be right. So good, Eric. It's going to be good. Let's get started. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Well, when it comes to residencies in Las Vegas, most big stars only stay for a few months. Maybe a few years, Bruno Mars just kicked off his ninth year at the Park MGM, and a new report could explain why he's been there for so long. And it's not just because of good ticket sales. According to cable news channel News Nation, part of the reason allegedly is Bruno racked up big gambling debt. Oh my God! How big? Possibly $50 million. Bruno, and I am not good at math, but we will all do this together. Bruno earns around $90 million a year as part of his residency deal. Uh, so $60 million after Uncle Sam. Uh, and, yeah. And so that tells you that basically... Uh, Bruno gets the check from the lion mm -hmm. and then just uh, gives it right back to them. It was like a cool, quick exchange of money. Allegedly. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's about 60 after taxes, so, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't... I can't even like wrap my brain around one being like, here's ninety million dollars. Oh, sorry, sixty million after taxes. Yeah. And then also being like, and I also potentially owe fifty million dollars. Like normal people, like we can't even just no. grasp these numbers. I, I will tell you, I played electronic roulette over the weekend, oh, did and you? I got nervous because my one dollar chip was <laughs> was, was the wrong bouncing way. around, and I'm literally going clear it. I don't want it's not landing on the number that I wanted it right. to. And Colin and Jeff had to remind me. Colin goes, "It's a dollar. It's. <laughs> I think we're good. I mm -hmm. think we're good. But yeah, mm -hmm. I." I, all jokes aside, I feel awful for him. Uh, I've had uh, people that I know in my life that has a gambling addiction. Right. I have a lot of vices. Thank goodness I do not have that one. It's not a laughing matter. I hope he gets the help that he deserves because it's one of those things where it's like wasted talent. He's so good, so good. at what he does. Everybody loves Bruno. We do. He's just uh, he, he's got his start. Uh, in Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh, at one of my favorite resorts, uh, I talk about all the time, the Royal Hawaiian. He used to play at the Mai Tai Bar. Hi, Susan. Uh, at the Royal Hawaiian. And, yeah, Bruno, I, I just hope you get through this. Next up, saying thank you. Yeah. Don't want to see that to anybody. That was Becky. <laughs> Becky, we think uh, we're wishing Bruno good, right, Becky? That's right, yeah. Yeah. There we go. 
sorry. Oh, oh, poor Becky. We can we let's be preemptive. Can we get her a cake or something? Because we're gonna just we're gonna run this bit into the ground right there. there. Oh, they brought. Oh, okay. This we is gonna be, be a good show. To be yeah. <laughs> Next up, saying thank you to his mom. It's been a big year for Usher. He remember he played the Super Bowl halftime show, and this weekend, Usher earned Entertainer of the Year at the uh, NAACP Award Image Awards and paid tribute to the women uh, in his life, especially his mama. Look. Far too often in our industry, do women, you know, uh, not get the recognition that they truly deserve. And when we first started. It was even harder for a mother to believe in the dreams that I had because uh, I was unwavering, being raised without a father uh, in our home, being raised as from a single parent, it was a lot. But she, um, she was more defined. If anyone deserves it more than anybody, it's her. So sweet. Yeah. If you guys don't know, Usher's mom was his manager uh, at the beginning of his career. He also thanked his wife, his new wife, uh, children, and his late grandmother. Other than children, I can echo all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, my dad was in the house, but, you know, uh, right. I mean, come on. It, it didn't really want a lot to do with me, but my mom, uh, y you know, was always my biggest cheerleader, and mm -hmm. uh, ba I, she was basically a single mom. Um, and then my grandmother, this wouldn't be here without my grandmother. Right. So that's good to see. That's mm -hmm. good to see Usher sweet. pay tribute. It's very, very sweet. And he's so damn talented. And he's so, like, he looks like he's 25. <laughs> I mean, yeah, honestly. I know, seriously. Like, and his mom looks like she's 26. But it's like, been okay. such a good year. A Color Purple mm -hmm. one, two, Movie of the Year, Fantasia one, mm -hmm. uh, at the NAACP mm -hmm. Image Award. Yeah, it was uh, it was a great it was uh, it was a, it was a, it was a good show. Speaking of a good show, again, Eric drinking beer and more. When we come back, back after this. It is a show that loves a good tease. Uh, now, we're not talking The Bachelor. Um, John Oliver poked a little fun at Inside Edition <laughs> on a new episode of Last Week Tonight, uh, Sunday Night at HBO. I haven't seen this yet. Le roll it, Leo. And now, coming up on Inside Edition. Pickleball. These women say they were swindled by the pickleball king. Shame on you, Rodney. Plus, Orca versus Shark. And what happened to Nicole Kidman's knee? Plus, give me back my dog. And opening night mishap at the SpongeBob musical. And you won't believe what's trapped inside this shipping container. Oh, it's scratching, dude. Plus, warthogs. How dangerous are they? And Claw Machine Rescue. And, dude, where's your pants? Plus, then, college students who want to look hot. Plus, put a ring on it, if you dare. And, watch out, buddy. Thank you for being brave. Little Golden Girl Sensation. Why everyone's saying she looks like one of the Golden Girls. <laughs> There's nothing better on television. There's nothing. I'll just happen. That is fantastic. Deborah Norville, you're a queen. Oh my gosh. That I'm I, exhausted. I feel like I just worked out. I love I love a good tease though. I love the overly that's so like late 90s and uh -huh. they never changed. No. I don't ever change inside edition. Don't ever change. No. Next up, more late night for you on Friday night. Jimmy uh, Fallon welcomed two of the original stars of the Ghostbusters to the Tonight Show. And they helped Jimmy do one of his classic bits. Watch this. If you, if you have, if you haven't figured it out, friends, that's Bill Murray, Ernie Hudson, 
Jimmy, and right there in the center next to Jimmy, that's Ghostbusters singer Ray Parker Jr. Singing his classic, using, you know, Jimmy does the classroom instruments thing. By the way, they're all promoting Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, which hits theaters this Friday. Getting good reviews. Really? Yeah. Well, and I didn't like the second the one. The I, That one. I, eh, but mm -hmm. this one is already getting great reviews. I want to see this. I liked the interview in general, too. I mean, we, Jimmy's not always the best with interviews. He's not. Yeah. He's just he's a comedian. He's, he's funny. not. Yeah, like, he's funny, and that's his. those are his shticks. That's yeah. what he's good at. But they had a segment where Ernie Hudson was talking about how he tattooed someone's leg once, but just signing her leg with Sharpie. And then she got it tattooed on her leg. And within seconds, because they just doesn't miss a beat, Bill Murray grabs a marker and throws his leg up for Ernie Hudson to like <laughs> tattoo him. It was pretty funny. If you like him, you'd like the segment. It was funny. Next to the dish, she's been a star since the mid 90s. But Kate Winslet says no one really prepared her for the level of fame that came with starring in a blockbuster like Titanic. I can imagine she opened up about what it was like in her interview on Sunday today. Let's listen to a little bit of it. When you are given opportunities like that when you're young and you're a girl, you just shut up and be grateful. So there was a lot of kind of, <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, thank you, thank you. And so I felt like I really had to sort of stand up for myself. Do people really think I'm fat? Like, I'm not fat. I'm just a healthy, normal person. That's how I am. But kind of being scrutinized for it and having to almost explain myself or my shape was just wrong. I could just sort of take a step back and was able to at least recognize, hang on a second, I, okay, I'm famous, but I don't feel like I want to be famous. Also, I'm not good enough. I have to, I've got, I've got to learn stuff. I've got to experience the kind of anxiety of playing this role and that role and learn from it and make mistakes and grow. It's the holiday. Well, well, think about it. I mean, when they were shooting, I, we were talking about this in our meeting today, when they were shooting Titanic, Kate was 21. Mm -hmm. She celebrated her 21st birthday on the set of Titanic, and I was telling the gang, I never look at the scene. You know, in the toward the end of the movie. Spoiler alert! The spoiler of movie. The Titanic, yeah, Titanic spoiler, goes down. The Titanic sinks, <laughs> and uh, I know. But <laughs> go ahead, write me an email. Uh, and, <laughs> But you know when they're, uh, she goes to rescue Jack, mm -hmm. who's been handcuffed to that pipe, and the water's up to here, and she's holding on to the pipes. Mm -hmm. That was sh they shot that on her 21st birthday, and that water was real cold. Like they didn't warm it up. It was so her reaction when she first gets in. I learned all this. She did an interview with Oprah. She said that Leo then was holding on to another pipe in this frigidly cold water. Yeah. And Kate looks at Leo and goes like this: "Leo, it's my 21st birthday." <laughs> and Leo goes. I don't care. I don't care. It's cold. It's cold. I don't Frozen. care. Like, great. But no, Frozen. going back to that, you know, uh, it's worse now. We're going to talk to someone that's dealt with social media hate. But even in the late 90s, I remember this. Mm -hmm. The fact that people referred to Kate as fat, mm -hmm. I, I, it just sh it was shocking to me. I was a young, I was in my 20s in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is what you can see. You are real messed up right. if you think that Kate Winslet in any definition is, is I don't know. It's just so right. gross to me that people so, would say that. It was like, so out there in the zeitgeist that even, I mean, I was maybe eight or nine, and I still remember hearing about, not from my family, not from my mother, but just in general, like how oh my gosh the girl who plays rose is so fat though and like i remember hearing that it's such a horrible message age. for girls it's not wild yeah and again we have, we're following that topic up in a little bit kate by the way she's not promoting her new hbo series the regime i still don't love it i love kate but i just got to be honest i still don't love it mm. next in the dish it's one of the funniest movies of the past two decades but don't ever 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 get your hopes up for bridesmaids 2 kristen wig yep yeah. Kristen Wiig, who uh, co-wrote and stars in the movie, says, <laughs> sorry, Love this scene, so good. There, is, there is not really a funnier scene uh, in Ever. any movie. Uh, there's never been a conversation about a sequel. She says, <laughs> there's, she says the original movie had an end and it exists in the world as is. Several of her co-stars from the movie have said they would do a sequel if everyone else would. Uh, Kristen, by the way, she's out promoting the upcoming Apple TV Plus uh, dramedy comedy called Palm, mm -hmm. uh, Palm Royale, which uh, that I cannot wait for. I'll give you a review. Yes. But I 
agree with Kristen on this one. <laughs> You don't need to make a sequel about everything. That movie is good as it is, and no matter what you do, you're never gonna make it as good as that one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's, 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 you're never, ever, no. ever, ever. No, and it, so I, it's this, her name is escaping me, but the woman who plays Rita in the show, the mom with the two sons, if you've remembered the, the towel incident. Wendy, Wendy yes, thank yeah. you. She did an interview where she's like, well, I can already tell you where Rita would be. One of her sons would have impregnated a teacher and she'd be divorced and be unhappy because she needed a job. <laughs> like it was, she went on a whole tangent about it. She's like, but we're good. We don't need to see We don't that. need to see a yeah. We don't need to make a sequel, yeah. <laughs> I... I'll be quick on this, and I, I won't be gross. That scene we just showed you, I saw that movie by myself <laughs> at the Man Theater in Plymouth, Minnesota, <laughs> and I, I was sitting there, I, I was howling, Crying. like, cry. <laughs> when Maya Rudolph goes into the street, and she goes, it's, 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 it's happening, happening. It's, it's happening. happening. <laughs> Nothing is funnier. It's so good. I'm just yeah. Crying. Up next, it's the Netflix series following life on the PGA Tour. This weekend, I fi uh, finished season two of Full Swing. And uh, let me cut to the chase and then I'll tell you why I loved it. I loved it as much as season one. And. I am coming at this probably like a lot of you. I don't follow golf. Well, now I do, kind of. I, I don't know anything. I didn't know what a birdie was, a bogey, a bogart. I don't know what, uh, I don't. He knows a bogart. I don't know how many, I don't know uh, golf clubs. I don't, you know, anyway, right. I, I, I really don't know any of that. But I know a good story. I know good people. I know good drama. Uh, and I know what makes a good show. And Full Swing, season two has all of these things. This season picks up. Even if you don't know golf, you know the drama with the Live Tour and the PGA Tour uh, combining. This season picks up right after that announcement's made or right as the announcement's made. And then they go into, just like season one, each episode kind of concentrating on a single player. Right. Uh, one of them is about the Fitzpatrick uh, brothers, Matt and his younger brother, Alex. Mm -hmm. And anybody that has siblings out there and, you're, and you are in the same business and the rivalry that comes with it, you'll appreciate that episode. You end up really rooting for Alex, who oh. Matt is, you know, he's Matt. He's the big golfer. He's the big golfer. He yes. won the PGA, right? I think he did? Last year, maybe. May, last year. I don't remember. But, and then you want Alex to do so mm -hmm. well and to get out of his brother's shadow and then the end of it is all about the Ryder Cup uh, mm. and and you see, maybe you saw it in the news, that clip of Roy, Roy, Rory McIlroy, who rarely loses his cool, yelling at that caddy. That clip went viral. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I you see that. the behind mm -hmm. the scenes, because Rory is so cool and calm and such a good guy. You see what leads up to that? Why he got so upset. Why he got so upset and yelled at that caddy. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, guys, it's so good. It makes me, I say this every spring, but now I told the crew, as I approach 50, I have a list of things I want to do. I really do, it makes me want to take golf lessons. Yeah, I do. I really do. The show made me want to do that. Well, we went a couple years ago, we went to a local golf course to Braemar with you. Yeah. And we had our little mini lesson. I'm not opposed to saying, like, let's try it again. Yeah, I would do it again. Leo will come. Yeah. Well, you play. I play. My yes. fave gal pal, Lisa. La Corsier plays. Mm -hmm. I, I have people that could help me. I just want to do it as a hobby. Yeah. I don't want to be, you know, Tiger Woods. You know, I right. You're like, I'm not going into this trying I, to be I Tiger. I don't want to be Gay Woods. I just want to be, you know, what I, mean? I just want. <laughs> I want to be. I don't even want to be L Wood. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take a break. Do not turn that dial. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. It's a message that resonates through even our Goofy Show. Go out there and be yourself. Coming up, you're going to meet a huge influencer who's had a huge influence with this movement. And then, oh, he should never have agreed to this. Photographer Eric agrees to drink 40-year-old beer. We'll explain. And we're opening up the Jason Show mailbag to see what you have to say this week. That and more when we continue. Uh, 
Uh, before we get started, let's check in with Becky and make sure she's enjoying the... Let's make sure Becky is enjoying the show. Uh, we're about the midway point in. Yeah, Becky is... Okay, there we go. Becky, wave to America. There we go, there we go. There's Becky who didn't want to be on TV. Anyway, um, you know, uh, whether it's this show or the radio show, I end every single episode with a message about being yourself. And our guest today is a fantastic fantastic example of just that. Again, we rarely get serious or do stuff like this, but sometimes it's necessary. She learned to embrace what makes her different through the power of makeup. Watch. I'm a girl with a facial birthmark. Of course I have clothing on it that says it's a birthmark. So I don't get people coming up to me saying, what's wrong? I'm a girl with a facial birthmark. Of course I have little man children in my comments, triggered by a woman confident and happy in her own skin with or without makeup. And yes, I will be screenshotting these and sending them to the women in your life. <laughs> oh god becca that's so fantastic <laughs> that's becca lee brewer she's an uber popular makeup artist on social media where she's open about her skin condition and and celebrates what makes her beautiful audience give it up for becca everybody thank you for being here thank you i I celebrate you because, as I said, we don't do a lot of our shows goofy and, and silly, but I love this because you are the, the exact message that we try to, to come across. But it hasn't been easy, or it, it has it for you? Uh, no, it definitely has not been easy. I mean, growing up with a birthmark and not only a birthmark, but also being a person of color in a very small northern Minnesota town, mm. I stuck out in several different ways, so it was... Def difficult growing up because you have and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong there are two things that you're dealing with right it's a two can you explain what they are yep so I have port wine stain which is what it covers majority of my face um, and that's what causes like the reddish um, pigmentation and then I also have nevis of Oda which is more of like a bluish kind of birthmark and it even goes into my eyes Becca did a fabulous interview in glamour uh, UK go read it mate will probably link it in on, uh, on this interview you talked about when you kind of when there was a catalyst moment of your life where you where you thought to yourself you know what I, I'm gonna stop kind of beating myself up what was that moment like for you and when did it happen or what era did it happen I would say so it happened in about 2017 I remember there was a really popular youtuber Nikki tutorials who was doing um, what she called the power of makeup uh, where she did half makeup, half without. And I thought that just spoke so strongly to myself and my story. And so I put a post out there on fa my Facebook when I had decided to go back to esthetician school and I posted myself um, half with makeup and half without. And that was the first time I'd ever posted myself on social media, not with any makeup on. And for me, it was just such a positive experience um, just seeing the feedback from my friends and family on that. Can I ask you, because it may not be uh, a birthmark, it may be something else. This era, I don't know how kids do it, I really don't. Me it neither. was horrible for right, it was <laughs> yeah. horrible for me growing up as gay in the 80s and mm -hmm. 90s in Indiana. I didn't, and it would stop it too, yep. because of school, but now it's 24 hours of social media. Mm -hmm. What do you say to kids? Because you still get the hate. It, oh, we're not sure. going to yeah. paint a rosy picture. No. You still get haters <laughs> yes. online. What do you say? Because I know there's a teenager watching right now or a tween that gets online hate. What would you say to them to help them flush out the negative and focus on the positive and not be defined by others' value of themselves? I've just really come to learn that if you're not somebody I love and care about, then your opinion really doesn't matter. And at the oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing for me, for sure. Make a list, and if you are not on that list, it doesn't exactly. really matter. Nope, they exactly. ain't paying your bills. Exactly. Yeah, that's they ain't the thing. <laughs> okay, did you really? Did you screenshot? Oh, did, I have done that several times. Have you? Oh, I have. Because <laughs> if you if you missed it, can you explain what you what so you said there? So I said. Um, I get a lot of nasty comments, more specifically, usually from men, and I will screenshot them and send them to women in their lives. And I'm like, it's all fun and games when you think you're anonymous, right? And then as soon as you're held accountable to the people in your actual life, it's not so funny anymore. No. Do you really? Is it a lot? Because I, we were just having this conversation, with Aaron Schwab in the audience and I, I have found in my experience with Kendall and the women and colleagues of mine, 
the hate that they get is m the majority from women. It's women oh, being really? hard on other women. Do you find it 50-50 or is it I just... No, I would say mine mostly comes from men. Really? Mm -hmm. That's so disgusting to me. Yeah, it's, it is. It, the things that get told to me, I'm like, I don't understand why you were taking the time out of your day to do this. <laughs> is it still, you know, I'm kind of piggybacking off the question mm -hmm. slash advice that I, I, I asked you to give people. What do you, is it still hard to tell yourself to block it out sometimes? It definitely is. I, I mean, overall, I would say most of the time it doesn't bother me because I understand that it speaks a lot more about who they are as a person than it does about me. But when you're getting hundreds and hundreds of comments, like, coming at you some days... You're human. I, I'm human, exactly. Tell the folks how you turn, because Becca is an amazing makeup artist. How did you use that to channel all of this energy? Yeah, so I actually used to have a really negative relationship with makeup it was my thing to cover up it was my security blanket and then I've always been a creative person and I started finding it as my creative outlet and that's how I turned it into not just um, something to cover up with but something that I actually enjoyed doing and by doing that did you did you find in yourself did it help you not need the makeup to walk out and go to tar you know what I mean to yes. keep your head held high yeah for sure I think that and just like I said, deciding that it no longer mattered what other people kind of thought of me, that I was just going to own who I was. I love it. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I, I, I think it's so, so important, especially now when teenagers are defining their importance by what other people say to them on Instagram. Instagram ain't real, people. It's not real. Yeah. Filters and angles and all yes. of that. Give it up one more time for Becca. You can follow her on social media right there. When we come back, we're switching gears. Our photographer drinks 43-year-old beer when we return back in a moment. <laughs> Thank you so much. So nice to meet you. We're following you with that. We gotta check in with Becky, because if the show, mm -hmm. Becky's our barometer today, that's right. <laughs> it is time to respond to your questions and comments about the show. Leo, activate the mailbox. Here we go, everybody. You've got me. First up, a comment from Susan. Hi, Susan. She says, Jason, you got me hooked on the traders on the on Peacock. I've watched them all, even the UK and the Australia version. Yay. I know. I I know, I'm really, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. It is, it, it I unexpected, I didn't think I was going to like it, mm -hmm. and I didn't like season one, but it got me, man. It's so, it's one of my favorite, top ten of the television season, so watch it on Peacock if you have not. Lacey is next. She has a suggestion for us. Okay. Okay. You ready? She says, girl, girl, <laughs> you need to go to Taco Bell for your next fast food field trip and get, and yeah. And get their chicken empanada. It's crispy, cheesy, and delicious, and comes with a yummy dipping sauce. Well, well, we did on Friday. That's right. Oh, I missed that. Yeah, you oh. did. I know. I know you missed it because you were actually begrudgingly we were gonna let you come again. But yeah, I mean, but I mean, no, we, we yes. were we were gonna let you, but you were gonna have to sign a document. But anyway, but yeah. <sighs> You will follow these rules. Uh, part, this was so chaotic. It's probably going to be like four parts. Uh, yeah. See, and I wasn't even there. Not my fault. We not tried fault. empanada, the, the new empanada, the crispinata, they call it. And then uh, Jeff tried, this isn't a new item, but Jeff has never had a cheesy gordita crunch what? Um, in his life. Wait, I don't think I have either. It, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff said, um, uh, a, a cheap Connie said it was too expensive for him, oh. so he, yeah, Not so. Not dollar menu. But he'll eat it if daddy pays for it. Anyway, yeah. Won't we all, everybody? Won't we all? Jeff says yes if that gold credit card comes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the fast food field trip, uh, Poppy, hi, Poppy, has an idea. She goes, you would make a killing at the Minnesota State Fair selling T-shirts with Jeff quotes like, I don't like warm cookies, <laughs> and Jeff's other famous one, we're just here for the dessert. <laughs> she said, seriously, I would buy one of each. There we go, yeah. Surprise. Get in frame, Jeff. Oh, <laughs> me and I'll you. oh that's right, yeah. <laughs> Fine, yeah. Jeff, 
Find side hustle. Jeff will sell, sell you black market ones yeah. out of his van. Yeah. Uh, next, Kelly and Lucy from Duluth. We love Duluth, Minnesota. Had a had yeah. Oh oh. Okay. Had a really good laugh when I mistakenly said last week, emu. Uh, people were emu instead of emo in high in high school. So teenage Lucy decided to turn me into an emu on her app. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I was an animal, that would probably be the animal I would be. Yeah. Doing the yeah. Lord's work over there. That's, That's right. Nice. Thank you for that creative work. We're going <laughs> to hang it up in our office. Yeah. Thank you very much on that one. Okay. Next, a pair of comments about last week's best thing ever show with the Jason Show staff. Debbie says the items you showcased were awesome, but you, Kendall, Jeff, and Bjorn just clicked. Keep presenting the four of you on camera that way. Yeah, we did have a really good time. We had a really, well, we do. We have a legitimately a good time with we each other. We like each other. We do like each other, yeah. I mean, sometimes. Anyway, yeah. And when I joked about not, uh, and when I joked about not having Pontiac G6 cars to give away, like on Oprah's favorite thing show, Doug wrote, "Hi, Jason. They're not making the Pontiac G6 anymore." I don't think they're making Pontiacs anymore. Just a joke. It was just a joke. <laughs> Eric drinks 43 year old beer when we return. Back in a moment. There's never been a better background behind me. I'm telling you, nothing. I am as happy as a pig in mud right now. Okay. Um, uh, I forgot to roll up the teleprompter here. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm so excited I forgot to roll up the teleprompter. That's all right. Uh, it has been nearly 40 years, 40 years since uh, uh, Dallas did Who Shot JR. It's one of my first loves, and I can still remember where I was when I first saw this ultimate TV cliffhanger which actually aired, we found out, found out 44 years ago this week on CBS. That's right. The Who Shot JR finale of Dallas aired March 21st, 1980, forcing viewers to wait all summer and a little bit into the fall because of a writer's strike to find out who shot JR. His mama, his daddy, his business partner, his brother, Pam, uh, who? It led. I'm not joking, to mass hysteria on magazines like this famous Time Magazine cover. They were on Mad Magazine. Uh, the Queen, the Queen of England actually stopped Larry Hagman in England at an event and said, who shot JR? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, in that same year, because there were, they made products about this, in the same year, the Pearl Brewing Company created a novelty beer named for J.R. Ewing. The tagline on the J.R. Ewing beer reads, if you have to ask how much my beer costs, you probably can't afford it. Whoa. That's right. Well, cans of the beer are sold on eBay and uh, other resale sites today, and many of you over the nine seasons of The Jason Show have been nice enough to give me cans of, of the JR beer. I actually have a few of them on display every day on our set. Well, my mother uh, had a neighbor that recently gave her yet another can, and I went, okay, I got to do something positive with this. Thanks to her neighbor, by the way. I appreciate it. So I had the idea. I had the idea. You know what? Well, I have so many cans. Why not see what one of them tastes like? <laughs> but I certainly wasn't going to do it. But I knew someone on our staff that would. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for photographer Eric, everybody. Yeah. Um, so this is a positive thing, huh? This is a positive thing. And you're really happy. I'm, oh, I could, <laughs> the background, you being here, I just couldn't be more excited. So, um, now we did, 
We did Google this. Jeff did did a, did do a safety check on Friday. Um, we went to. I mean, we're not doctors, but yeah. But we did do a safety check, and according to the professional folks on Google, this probably shouldn't kill you. Yeah. Yeah. I have met the research team, and they are not as professional as I. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, okay. Now I have multiple cans, but these two are the cleanest. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to give you the least dirty of the two. Let, let's do the dirty one. Let's, let's do, do the, the dirty one. one. There we go. All in. Okay. So, again, this is from 1980. Is it going to What? Oh, do you want a glass for your beer? Yes. Just so we can see what it looks like? Just see, to see what it looks like? Or should I open it up here to see if there's any carbonation left? Oh! oh. There's carbonation left? Oh! It doesn't smell that bad. Oh, it still looks like beer. Oh. Or a doctor sample. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to make me drink that next week. <laughs> Anything for ratings. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, actually, that looks like... Yeah, you should get one, too, as long as you uh, got No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> you got the clean can over there. Is director Leo chanting? Uh, I'll, I'll only do it if Becky does it. <laughs> no, Becky. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Okay, fine. Pour me a little. There we go. That's good. That? That's fine. Okay. Um, are you ready? Yeah. Here's to life. Here's to death. Here's to... Here's the fox paying me to drink beer. <laughs> you ready? Ready? Oh, Eric, you're chugging oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> awesome. It's, it's actually pretty good. I gotta tell you, Eric is right. This is good. Yeah. I will drink the rest of your JR beers. No problem. Becky, get your butt down here. Come on, come down. <laughs> I'm not, we, it's, it's we are good. not joking. It's good. Yeah, I thought it would be chunky. I did too. And My mother-in-law would drink this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, that's so good. Cheers to you, my friend. Give it up for Eric, everybody. Oh. <laughs> we'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> that was good. This is not bad. No. Welcome back, everybody. Happy birthday to everyone. Celebrating in our birthday club. There we go. Happy birthday. We have a few celebrating in our audience. Oh, hello. The, hey! Eric's we're over drunk. here. Hey! Eric's drunk. <laughs> Does Eric, did the beer already hit Eric? <laughs> Eric is working that camera. Woo! Eric, swing that bad boy around. Let's just uh, there's Eric working the camera. There we go. They get a they get a birthday pen of sash and up to twenty dollars of free play at Grand Casino. You can sign up right now for the birthday club. Uh, just go to eventbrite.com, search the Jason Show, sign up, and don't worry if you can't be here on your exact birthday. You have a few days before and after to come to the studio and celebrate with us. We'll be back to wrap things up after this. <laughs> We had to check in with Becky one more time just make to make sure, sure make sure she's good. Yeah. And if Fox HR is watching, don't worry. That's a completely sober woman right there. She didn't she didn't touch the JR beer. Yeah. yeah. We did ask Eric though next time he decides to drink a 44-year-old beer, could he shotgun it? Yeah. You know, Something. Like, don't well, don't and also <laughs> uh, Leo widened out just a little bit. We were in good hands and we didn't even know it. There's a nurse in the audience right there. So if any Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. if, if anything would have gone awry, mm -hmm. she would have saved Eric. I, I don't know. We're, Eric says his belly feels okay right now. His tummy we're is okay. We're going to check in in a couple hours to see how that works. But no, it's been, people have given me, I think I now have every piece of Dallas memorabilia. I think I, so. I have like 30 JR ornaments. I, I have everything oh, now. Yeah. Tomorrow on the show, behind the scenes of Project Runway, Christopher Straub is answering some of the most common questions he gets about being on the show. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Bye, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.